Uh, I was trying to figure out what I was going to read uh, tonight, and uh, I started going through old issues of Circumference, and at a certain point, I just, I, I hadn't done that for a while, and the, the, the intensity of the discovery that happened every time we got a batch of submissions and put an issue together just came upon me in such a rush. And you're very lucky, I, there was a moment where I was like, I'm just going to read every issue from beginning to end, and, and that'll be what I do, but um, I won't do that. Um, but I am going to... Um, if you, will, if you will bear with me, I am going to read one poem from each issue. So there are seven issues, seven poems, um, which was incredibly hard to figure out, um, to decide what poems to read. So I, I chose a sort of a, a sampling that would give a, a sense of the, of the variety of stuff that we were so lucky to, to receive and to put out to the world in this way. Um, and I won't say a lot about them. Um, I'll just go through and, and read one, one from each. So the first poem... I'm going to read is uh, by a poet called uh, Takarabe Toriko, and it's translated by Hiroaki Sato from the Japanese. Um, and this was one of the first poems that we were like, whoa, things are weird out there. Um, <laughs> this poem is called Talk of Horses. A woman eating gruel at the end of the village also talks of horses. A child who likes colored juice also talks of horses. Far away, in a pond, a man holding a stone in his arms never stops talking of horses. Listen to my talk of horses. A horse that has chewed tobacco in the straw doesn't stop struggling. Horses neigh deeply, deeply between today and tomorrow. A horse is full moon. Because the villagers want talk of horses, the horses stand erect as a cliff. Because a rainbow of horses hangs over the roof, the TV stops working. Because villagers want talk of horses, from one end of the tobacco field surges a flood of horses' afterbirths. Their riots, year in, year out, never stop politely surprising the villagers. Can you imagine that cliché? They hang sheets from high windows and shout, We want to talk of horses. I wanted to talk of horses. Just one talk of horses. Then, from a paddy ridge, flaming horses gallop out. They are finally truly surprised that they themselves are horse-shaped. The awestruck villagers make a dam of red manes. Now let's talk of horses. <laughs> um, this is from our embargoed issue, but it's not going to be one of the uh, embargo poems. And I'll read this one actually in the original and in translation. Um, it, it, the poet is Amelia Rosselli, and she wrote the poem in 1960, and is translated from the Italian by Jennifer Scapitone. And actually, these translations just came out in a really great book called Locomotrix from the University of California Press. Per le cantate che si svolgevano nell'aria io rimavo ancora pienamente. Per l'avoltoio che era la tua sinistra figura io ero decisa a combattere. Per i poveri ed i malati di mente che avvolgevano le loro sinestre figure di tra le strade malate io cantavo ancora tarantella la tua camicia e la più bella canzone della strada. Per le strade odoranti di benzina cercavamo nell'occhio del vicino la canzone preferita. Per quel tuo cuore che io largamente preferisco ad ogni altra burrasca, io vado cantando amenamente delle canzoni che non sono per il tuo orecchio casto da cantante a divieto. Per il divieto che ci impedisce di continuare, forse io perderò te ancora e ancora. Sinché le maree del bene e del male, di tutte le fandonie di cui è ricoperto questo vasto mondo, avranno terminato il loro fischiare. For the singings that unwound in the air, I rhymed still utterly. For the vulture that was your sinister figure, I was determined to fight. For the poor and the ill of mine that unwound their sinister figures from among the ill streets, I still sang Tarantella, your shirt is the loveliest song of the street. For the streets odorous of gasoline, we sought in the neighbor's eye a favorite song. For that heart of yours that I, widening, prefer to every other storm, I go amenably along, singing those songs that are not for your chaste ear of a singer prohibited. For the prohibition that prevents us from going on, perhaps I will lose you still and still, until the tides of good and evil and of all the inanities which cover this vast world will have ceased their whistling. Issue three. Um, this is uh, by a poet called Sergei Gendlevsky, written in 1997, and translated from the Russian by Philip Meggers. If you're not too lazy, go ahead and cite Baratinsky, Vyazemsky, and Fett, etc. How death is an unending night. Others swear it's St. George's Day. Today, winter approaches. 
soon the new year. I'll splash myself with a little cognac, although in general I'm a sack of crap. I'm not yet bored by grabbing a little snow or meeting my pupil muse in the mirror. How many winters we've weathered. Just decide, will you, almost over the hill and still afraid to pick a watermelon? Exactly at seven, the workday awakens. A half man, half draft horse, each person turns up his own hell, like the door of a small closet in the shower. <coughs> this is from issue four. Um, uh, the poet is a, a Greek poet named Ursi Sertoropoulos, who actually Jenny and I uh, got to meet at the um, Letty House residency, which was one of the awesome things about the job, is actually meeting the, not only the translators who were incredible, but also the poets who, um, lots of them come to, come to the States and come to New York, and um, that's really super exciting. So um, Ersi is the, is the poet, and it's translated from the Greek by Stavros del Georges. Ask Socrates, Marilyn said. You are the general dog, the biggest, most terrible, awful, dark sensation of the greatest square. Leaning forward a little bit, or more backwards, the living part and slightly soft dead, will it leave the bottom? Or will the room turn upside down like a spoon's tip? What will the general picture of the situation be? Are you going to ask any more questions? It's starting to swell against a blue background, the biggest, most yellow, most that, black, the most numerous butterflies. Issue five. <laughs> um, and this one is written by a poet, Eduardo Milan, who's an Uruguayan poet who now lives in Mexico. It was written in 1991 um, and translated by uh, Patrick Mad Madden and Stephen Stewart. And we always, Jenny and I always, there was like this sort of thrill with um, poems in translation that were like about language and the way that that resonated, um, or also poems in translation that had like the U.S. in them or English words. It was always like a you know exciting tickle. This one is uh, untitled. Excellent language, excellent, pure, resplendent white flower, a lily. Birds sing in bird. Beavers eat in beaver. Humans speak in human, hand to hand, their voices touch in conversation. Brilliant? It's said brilliant. New York is said New York. Language of silver is said language of silver. For a golden age is said for a golden age. Gongora, gongora. It was time, man of Cordoba. It was time, man of Cordoba. Affliction is said easily. Um, Issue six uh, is, a, is a translation by Rosemary Waldrop from German, and the poet is Ulf Stolterhoff. As the original was published in 1998. The following. Like much else is based on mishearing, informed by its development accordingly, mixes forfeited substance with formal thanks, its status. Seems faulty, and like many a thing, hides nothing less than a secretion. But memory can draw or withdraw lists, their enzyme. This, for a start, now then, first resolution after er. Got rand and stwile rant. Is ectile, os, ubescent, sats, go, ring, mine, ode. The mouth seeks words to trigger writ. Formsmith confirmed, connecting link to creeper. What was the nature of this memory? Flat. How then was it compressed? Deeper, yet burrows wick into flanks, sniffs, prick the wound, etc. Severe repulsion. Then second resolution, so-called high, after re, bait, bellion, to find furrens, counting, lapse, member, and pair the parable with very verse, past, peel, fresh, veal, ergo, unintentionally, gnomic. Verily, a huge achievement through gaping with obscene gaps. Useful or not, the wench is quenched. The rest is hand-pulled proofs to correct. A vanitable pastime. How then was it done? Moonlighting, the third resolution is thank God called off, but unkind as she is, takes a seat. Gent tails and tires, collects public pulsion laps late. Here quest for sin presents its pose. Medial volution verbing fuse. And that is integration, the only one I've heard of. Um, and the last poem I'm going to read is from the last issue, issue seven. Um, 
slightly, slightly longer one, um, written by uh, Ani Sumari as the poet in 2003 in Finnish, um, translated by David Macduff. And this one is called The Sky, Swiss Airspace, December 30th. We slide on the tray of noon. We ski. We slalom on the expanse of clouds. On the plane's wing, it says, do not step outside this area. I would never dream of it, I promise you. Anyway, it's cold out there, negative 65 degrees Celsius. The snot runs. What joy to be able to pick an anthrax sample from one's nose. I long for you. Even in the deep frost, I can't concentrate on what is, be where I am. We are unquestionably at an altitude of at least 11,880 meters. That cloud is tall for its age. The hairs on its crown touch the angels of heaven. So, it's not, so at night, it's the starry sky. One must be thankful for that. If on top of everything else one wasn't thankful, what would happen then? Europe lies under an eiderdown, weary of those things that come from the sky, from the blue, the bolts, the ribs of the clouds slamming down into the divine comedy. Be quiet, be quiet, encyclopedia. The concepts burn your ears as you don't know what is behind them. Gratitude, freedom, love. Innocence is a white house and an empty bottle. Are you wiser now? From above the rural landscape is a threadbare suede coat, a moth-eaten stuffed reindeer. What else is missing from this picture? The shadows of the trails of jet planes <coughs> ticking over it. The Earth's face has always been hidden by plants and encrusted with bivalves. Is it any wonder that some of them were preserved, perpetuated in stone or resin, marble softness? But is it possible that even one portion of spaghetti bolognese will be preserved in any circumstance? The mountains grow bare skin and turn to cinders. The romantic beaches grow fossilized. The messages vanish from the answering machine. But the most haphazard one of the most tender things preserves its form, remains, moves minds, is put on display, receives its value by chance, a nucleus of meaning. The granite flickers. A human being wants to know his exact location, approximately, by rule of thumb, the bedrock, and how long a finger can be held in the candle flame before it burns. And if there is stone underneath, is there also stone on top? And what meteor would fall on my head if I lived long enough? And have I already lived beyond the moment when I ought to have died? And will I push my head through the gray granite even in the graveyard? But here is a surface which will not be breached, the horizon. You can freely choose an arbit arbitrary point anywhere on the globe, and you will notice that all gazes finally turn there. Before that, however, they perform an inconceivably complex figure dance at the fourth dimension of the system of coordinates. Through the oval window, I watch us reach our goal. I am not touched at all. In the sunlight, seen from above, the cities are broken mirrors in which your memories are distorted in reflection. You clench your fist. You caress the emptiness. The dead would do well to weep for the living. Thank you, Anne.